Hey guys, this is Lee here. Are you going to be sailing your sunfish in the winter? Are you going to be sailing in the ice cold freezing waters? It could be really nice sailing in September and October when the temperatures are cooler and the breezes can be nice, just perfect for sailing. It's not too early to start thinking about storing your sunfish. So in this video, we're gonna go over some things you wanna do and what not to do when storing your sunfish for the winter. I'd like to thank all the people who've been subscribing to the channel and it helps the channel grow. A lot of you are watching the channel, but have not yet subscribed. So if you don't mind, please press that button right down there, and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. My last couple of videos have gotten really good responses and I really appreciate all your comments. Just some questions that I was asked during them and I'm going to answer a few of those at the end of the video. So stick around and you'll hear the questions and answers. And one of those videos was how to approach a lee shore on the water and other objects that are lured. Well, I have some photographic proof that I made mistakes back then too. So this is me right there. I was probably selling for about a year. This is my friend Ken and I decided to basically get push up on this dock. So always anticipate this happening and don't be like me or just learn from my mistakes. And now to the video. What's nice about the sunfish, it's a really simple boat. Having a small boat like a sunfish is a lot easier to prepare for the winter compared to a big boat with an engine where you have to worry about engine things and oil changes and plumbing and sinks and food left over and heads. So take us some time at the end of the season and prep your boat properly and then you'll have a longer lasting boat and it could give you pleasure for a very long time. So the one thing you really want to do at the very minimum is wash your boat before you put it away. What that means is use fresh water, wash it all down and then use boat soap also. Rinse the top, the sides, the inside, the bottom, the hull, the back, all the metal parts. It's really important to wash down your metal parts and also rinse off your sail really well with fresh water. Before you put anything away, you wanna make sure everything is dry. So make sure, open up the cockpit drain and drain that out. Also hold up your sail or lean your sail out or just rig it up and just let it air dry. You could roll it up afterwards, but if you really want to take it off the sail and fold it up, you could do that too but rolling it is perfectly fine. The main reason you wanna make sure everything is dry is because when you put something away where it's wet, if there's still a little salt residue, that salt can drip onto your metal parts and degrade the metal parts and corrode them much faster. Another thing is you have to watch out for mildew and mold, and that is a pain in the neck and also could damage your boat. So when the hull is dry, the sail is dry, and the spars and the and the blades are all dry, then you should store them. The best place to store them is in your house. Some people have actually seen put a boat in their living room, but those people are either single or they have very, very, very understanding partners. The next best thing would be in a basement or a garage or a shed, just to keep it away from the elements. Now, if you don't have that much room, there's a couple of companies that make lifting bridles that you can install on the ceiling of your garage. So you could lift up the boat out of the way and then you could park your car or whatever you put inside your garage. And if you're lucky enough to have a boathouse, then you could store your sailboat in the boathouse. Now also, if you wanted to put it in your garage and you don't have room and you don't want to have to hoist it to the ceiling, you could also put it on its side. You put some carpet, maybe some cushions on the floor, and then you can lift up the boat on its side, ideally with the drain plug on its lowest level. Open up the drain plug. If there's any moisture in there or some water, it could drain out. However, if there's a lot of water in your boat, what I would suggest is you make sure you drain the water out before you store the boat. Now, if there's gallons and gallons of water, this might be the best time in the fall to either put inspection ports into your hull so you could get some air circulating there and then get the water out because the water is eventually going to get in the foam blocks that are inside the boat and they're going to make them swell and make the boat heavy and a heavy boat is a slow boat it's hard to lift and it's harder to sail and then no one wants to help you put it on your trailer or your car top try to keep your boat as light as possible so if you're interested in a hoisting system i'll leave a link down below for some more information now if you're like the majority of most people you don't have any indoor storage and you're not lucky enough to have a garage so it's totally okay to keep your boat outside some people just turn the boat over or keep it upright and they just let the elements 
hidden. What's great about the Sunfish is that it's really, really a durable boat, even if it's snowed on or rained on or the sun shines on it all the time. However, if you wanna keep it looking nicer and protect it for a little bit longer, I would definitely either have it underneath some sort of shelter or a cover. Now you can get a custom cover made, and I'll leave some links down below where you can get custom covers, or you could go to a hardware store and just get a blue or a brown tarp and just tie it around the hull. So when you use a cover or a tarp, you want to make sure it's pretty snugly covered with it and make sure it doesn't want to blow away in some of the winds that will get over the winter. Also a tight fitting cover will repel rainwater from accumulating and also act as a turn against some animals, especially something like a raccoon. So speaking of pests, you could also get mice too. So be careful with mice because they do tend to want to chew sails, covers. If you can store your sail in a protected area, then try to do that. You also could put your sail underneath the tarp for the winter, wrap it around your sail, or just wrap it and put it in a cover. That'll be ideal. Now, one thing that most people do not do is they don't move their gooseneck during the off season. What I mean by that is if your gooseneck is held in by a screw and tightened in, I would loosen that screw to bolt, or if you have a quick release lever for an adjustable gooseneck, I would definitely open that up, loosen up the gooseneck, and move it to a different place that you don't use the gooseneck normally. What that does, it lets the, that area not get corroded as much because you'll have a brass gooseneck along with aluminum together. And when they touch, they cause an electrical galvanic reaction that corrodes the aluminum relatively quick. Another thing you can do is you can wrap a thin piece of tape on the aluminum spar and you could put the gooseneck on that tape so it'll be less of a galvanic reaction. I also would suggest that you protect the mast from touching the brass also so you don't corrode the mast quicker. Now one thing you should know that sometimes the mast gets water in it and this is really dreadful especially if you sail in salt water. So what I would do is I would lift up the mast and tilt it and listen. Put your ear right next to it and listen. You'll, you'll hear water rush down if there's water in it and you could lift it up and you could hear it. It's kind of it's that it's kind of like a musical instrument. So anyway, if you hear that, I would take a drill and drill a hole maybe a quarter inch wide hole or maybe small but a quarter inch wide is about that big and you could drain the water out and if you want to squirt some fresh water in there and then slosh it around and get all the salt water out of there it's going to prevent or slow down the corrosion from the inside out and why should you care if there's water inside your mast because if there's salt water especially inside your mast it's going to corrode it from the inside and then you have no idea when it's going to break So if you're getting any value from this video, please smash that like button. I really appreciate it. So again, wash your main sheet with fresh water, also your halyard, and if you have some outhauls and Cunninghams and any other lines, make sure they're rinsed really well. Make sure they're dry and don't store them while wet in dark air because they're just going to get moldy. Now, if you have to store your sunfish outside, I would suggest that you just store it right on its dolly if you have a dolly like a SciTech or a Dynamic dolly, or if you have some sort of two by fours or four by fours or something to keep it off the dirt, that would be nice. You could actually make something. Some people make small sheds, some people make racks. What it is, is you don't want to get it on the floor because that dirt, it's just gonna make your boat dirty and it's gonna seep into your fiberglass and make it harder to clean in the spring. And when you come into the spring and you wanna start sailing, it's a lot easier just to take your cover off go to the water, maybe rinse it off a little bit, make sure everything is, is in good shape and go sailing right away. The more work you do in the fall, the better off you're going to be in the spring. Ideally speaking, the best way to store a sunfish is upside down with the deck towards the ground. That's because it will be less likely to accumulate water and also it's more aerodynamic. So for instance, if you're near the water and there's a big amount of wind coming, 
it's less likely to go flying about. However, it's really the water that you have to watch out for. You can get snow in your cockpit. I would put something underneath the cover to make it tent or a TP like. You could put a five gallon bucket. You could put a yoga ball. You could put some sort of plastic crate on there. You could basically put anything you want. So as long as it creates a TP tent or a tent action so the snow can melt off and not accumulate in the cockpit when you store your boat right side up. Now I spoke about earlier about draining the water out of your hull. Now if you have a lot of water in your hull, there's a couple of things that's gonna go around. Water is heavy, it's about eight pounds per gallon. Over time, that water is gonna get into the foam in your boat. Now the foam will soak it up and that'll get heavy. Now what most people don't think about is that when the water freezes, it expands. You don't want the foam to expand and then press on the deck and the hull because that could potentially separate the foam blocks from your hull and then you can get all sorts of weirdness. One, it'll make your boat softer, which is slower. And then if you hit any small sort of wave, you'll get some noise that sounds like a, a kettle drum or an oil can. And that's not very ideal and it's not fast. Now, if you really wanted to go to extra yard, you could also polish your boat with a nice boat polish. I would not use wax, especially on the hull, unless they're made for to go fast on the water. You don't want to wax the bottom of your boat. So after everything is said and done and you put your boat away, now it's time to go inside and enjoy the winter and start making your holiday wish list. And speaking of gifts, I'd like to thank Scott Olson from the Lake Norman Yacht Club for giving me this handy razor blade. He saw in my older video when I did a, a Sunfish Directs box opening, I was using a scissor, I was opening up the box and it kind of freaked him out. So he met me at the North Americans in Lake Norman, North Carolina, and he gave me this nice present. So thanks a lot, Scott, I appreciate it. And another gift I wanna make a shout out to is Jim Kohler of the Dinghy Shop. Right before the Round Shelter Island race, he gave me this long piece of line about that long. I said, thank you. And I put it into my life jacket. And during that race, I didn't need it. However, a month and a half later, I go to Fire Island with my friend Kenny and my spars came apart in the front because my bolt came out of the interlocking eye loops. So I knew I had something in my pocket of my PFD. I took that line, I put the eye bolts together and I lashed them together. I'd like to thank Jim for saving my day and let me go to Fire Line and went back with no issues. And all it did was a lot of knots with that line. So thanks a lot to Jim at the Dinghy Shop. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment down below. I read all the comments. And now for some questions. Don Mon asks, I want to get into sailing, but I don't live near any open water. So sailboats are hard to find near me. Any tips on finding sailboats? Okay, Don Mon, thanks for the question. Well, the easiest place that I look for is Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. You could Google around and see what kind of uh, sailboats are available in your area. There's probably or possibly a boat club or a sailing school that might have a fleet of boats. And those fleet of boats sometimes are up for sale or you could rent them or you could loan them out. So check those out. Also, when you're around a lake, there's a lot of houses and farms and things like that that might have boats laying on the side of their house or in their yard. Then I'm not saying trespass, but take a look. If you see a boat out there, especially if it's kind of like laying there, uh, they might have never wanted to sell it and they don't know how to get rid of it. Don't be afraid to knock on a door and say, hey, you might be interested in, in looking at that boat. Maybe you can get it for a really good deal. So uh, good luck, Don Mon. And another thing, if you want to try to buy a new boat, there's a couple of places that I know, for instance, the Dinghy Shop and sunfishdirect.com, which would sell you and deliver a brand new boat right to your place. Avon asks, can you explain what's better? Sail rings or sail ties to attach the sail to the booms? Well, that's really a preference thing. And in my opinion, it really doesn't matter if you have sail rings or sail ties. If you're really at the top of the fleet in the racing uh, community, most of those people who sail on the upper levels are using sail ties exclusively. 
However, I've seen people who are kind of lazy who want to put some sale ties on and some clips on. They do really well. And I'm not talking about just your average sailor. I'm talking about the top of the fleet sailor who could be lazy. They might even know who I'm talking about, Amanda. Whatever you like. If you like to use the colored sail, to, uh, sail clips, by all means do that. If you just want to tool around in, on your lake or your bay and you're not really racing, it really doesn't matter if you have sail clips. Sail ties also, if you don't tie them correctly and they're all different lengths, they can actually be detrimental to the sail flow if you're interested in racing. So putting sail ties on is a little bit more of a pain in the butt, to be honest. But once you get it set, it, it, it's nice to have the sail ties. But for the average sailor, you're not going to notice the difference. Tammy asks, are you sailing the world championships in Sarasota in October? Tammy, yes. I love to go to world championships. Uh, it's just a really nice thing to go race with friends that I've made over the years. And I see a whole bunch of friendly faces in the Sunfish class from all over South America, Europe, and North America. It's a, it's a lot of fun. So if you're around there, come on, stop by and say hello. Tanya asks, Hey Lee, I have a universal tiller joint on my sunfish. If I happen to let go, the extension erratically bounces away from me and I'm scrambling to get it back, usually at the very inopportune moment. Is that how they all are or should I change it? Thanks a lot, Tanya, for your question. And no, don't change it. The universal tiller extension is bent especially when you store it. So when you let go of it, especially in attack, it's gonna bounce away from you. And of course it's gonna be on the opposite side of the boat and you have to jump over the boat and it's really awkward. However, the best thing to do is not let go of the tiller when you do go ahead and tack and you'll have to do a round the back exchange. But then after a while you get used to it. It really makes for a better sailing experience when you do get used to the position of the tiller, which you could put it right here or right here, rather than the fixed tiller, which is always in back of you. So don't give up, keep sailing. Thanks a lot, Tanya. And Pat writes, I'm trying to help a lady across the lake that sails every sunfish race, but comes in last. He put some telltales on her sail and he gave her a lesson. So that's that's really nice of you, Pat. Everyone should try to help out a fellow sunfish sailor because that's what the sunfish class does. The people are really friendly and all the help is appreciated. When I rigged her boat, her deck cleat was off the boat. And so they tied the halyard to the front bow handle. That's, that's pretty good, that'll work. It, it, not for the long run, but it'll, it'll work. I bought a small access port, but he's not sure where to put it. What you want to do is whenever you want to try to put any hardware, whether it be the bullseye fair lead, the bow handle, the deck cleat, or the, or the gudgeon bracket, you want to have the, the port relatively close to where you're going to be putting that cleat. However, there's one thing that you should know. If the cleat is going to be in one position, do not put the port right next to the cleat. You want to give yourself a little bit of room depending how long your hand is and your arm because you need to put your hand underneath there. Keep that in mind when you're when you're doing work. It doesn't have to be right next to it, but you don't want it too far so then you're sticking your arm all the way up to the shoulder. Keep that in mind wherever you're putting your your ports, the most common areas are right in front of the gudgeon bracket, between the splash rail and the daggerboard trunk, sometimes uh, in front of the mast, a little bit off to the side. You might have to cut through some foam blocks, but it is what it is. So that's it with the questions. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comments below. I read all the comments. So there you have it. There's a video. I really appreciate it. I hope you got some value from it. So please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button and press that notification bell so you know when I come out with a new video. Thanks and I'll see you on the water.